Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat. Hey, ladies, this is Nyoka Hall, and I want to welcome you to Trust God, Cry, Repeat podcast, a fresh new podcast for your encouragement. Today, I want to talk about hating what God hates and loving what God loves. Let's dive in. I want to make a pretty alarming statement when we um, when we look at how we are to live. So there is no need to be a Christian if you live only a little differently than a non-believer. I'll say it again. There is no need to be a Christian if you only live a little differently than a non-believer. Our job as a blood ball believer is too big to do it halfway. Our job is to be effective as an image bearer of Jesus Christ. When I get excited, I try to keep it clear, but they slur together. Ugh. Now, more than ever, we should be bold. We should be vocal about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should be fellowshipping. We should be calling and visiting. We should be adopting children and fostering children and any other way that the Lord is using you and your family. Um, and any other thing that you can do for the glory of God, that's what we should be doing. Like Romans 12 and 29 says, let love be genuine. We should be abhorring what is evil and holding fast to what is good. That's Romans 12 and nine. You should be reminding others that in a time where many are falling prey to the lies of Satan and the unnecessary isolating of themselves from others because of the powers that be, they say that for this virus that it, um, that has a higher recovery rate than being hit by a bus, that virus, um, that they should be isolated and away from their loved ones. That causes a lot of negative effects in people's lives. I know that's something that's controversial, but facts are facts. We need each other. We should be modeling faith instead of modeling fear as blood bought believers. The word of God says in James, James 5 and 14, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That's the, that's the scripture in the name of the Lord. Are we doing that? Are we doing that? Or are we doing the opposite? If anyone is sick, let me know ahead of time so I can stay away from you and I don't have to deal with that nonsense today. Or that seems more like what we're doing. I mean, that's not everybody, but for some people, that's their everyday life. They're finding themselves locked in their homes, afraid of the very thing that brings us closer in the end. Like I'll say, and I'll make that a little bit more clear. The Bible says to live is Christ and to die is gain. So we should be living boldly. We should be vocal. Like I said earlier, we shouldn't be fearful of the gain that comes as a blood bought believer. But I won't get off on a tangent. I'll stay focused. Okay, so in Hebrews 11 and 6, it also says, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Faith, we need it. We need to be operating in faith. Because it's, the Bible says it is impossible to please God without it. Okay, or maybe let's check out Psalms 34 and 4. It says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. This is one of the scriptures that's been carrying me through my week. I had a very challenging week. Um, and I know if you're alive and you're a Christian, every week can be challenging from um, if the very small things to the huge things. But this has been carrying me through my week, y'all. I'm telling you. Or let's hey, let's travel to... Philippians 1 and 21 that says for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain that's the one I used earlier these things are the those the those treasures and jewels of the word of God that we should be like just enjoying and we should be showing off to others the treasure of the word of God the the scriptures that carry us through we should be sharing them with others okay so we should not be boggled down by life so much that we can't uphold the scriptures Life does not trump the grace, I'm not even just sticking on the grace. Life does not trump the Bible and the truth of God's word. I'll say it like that. Life and its circumstances does not make the word of God void. 
So no matter what you're going through, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what your cousin's going through or your grandma's going through or your dad or whoever, it does not make the word of God become false or inactive or dead. The word of God is just that, the word of God. It carries us through, it's life-giving, it's life-changing, it's motivating if we read it. You have the most powerful weapon known to mankind and if we do not know how to use it, then we will not have any power from it. Just like the, the spirit of God that actually resides in the blood-bought believer. If you never feed the spirit of God, if you never are spending time in prayer, if you are never reading the Bible, if you're treating it as an accessory to your life, then you will, you will actually be lacking the power. But let me get back because I get excited and I get off on a tangent, but I will stay focused on this one. So we have to understand that if we if we are serving God and living for Christ, let me go back. We have to understand that we are either serving and living for Christ or serving and living for Satan. And that's truth. You can't go in between. There is no halfway point. There is no anything. It's either all Christ or you're living and serving Satan. So we have to make sure that it's a distinct line that's drawn today. Just a reminder. So we are to love Christ. I'm sorry. We are to love what Christ loves and hate what Christ hates. We need to look back at God's resume. God is faithful. He is to be trusted. He is to be shared with others. He's, he's, I'm sorry. He is to be shared with others. I get really I'm telling you guys, I'm not even trying to divert my attention, but this week has been hard and just reminding myself of the truth that God's word is bringing tears to my eyes, y'all. So let me just get through this point. We need to look back at God's resume. I'll restate that he is faithful. He is trust. He is to be trusted and he is to be shared with others because the Corona ca casualties or this virus casualties has been casualties in the spiritual as well and let me explain that when we first started this pandemic a year ago um it was told to us that it was going to be like a mass casualties and people all type of fallout like you could walk outside and the, the streets will be filled with the the fallen that's how it kind of came across in the beginning like it was just a lot of fear mongering that happened and a whole lot that i won't go into right now but what is true about the virus, as far as I'm concerned, that it has caused a lot of casualties spiritually, that a lot of people have fallen away. A lot of people have um, like just come away from where they said they were. Like those, the people that they said they were Christians, but weren't living it, found themselves not feel like going through all the nonsense of, of the pandemic and they found themselves embracing the world rather than embracing Christ. Like it calls um, a wheat and tear kind of process. That's what this is coming from my opinion, of course. But those who are spiritually starving need to be filled. They need to be fed. So that's the goal today. Uh, many are dying spiritually. Many are losing heart. Many have stopped fighting and many have adopted the abominations and the hated things of God, those things that God says he hates, the abominations that he can't stand and have created an all encompassing lifestyle of them. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. This is coming from, let me skip down, skip down. There we go. Okay. I'll just read this scripture for this reason. God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchange, natural exchange, natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with the women that were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error error. And since they did not fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to debase minds to do what ought not be done. They were filled with all manners of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanders, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. 
that's what the that's what the word of God says. And I did not put that on my notes as far as, as um, where it comes from, but I will make sure I put that in the blog. So let's go on with the company scriptures. Um, it says there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to Him: haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. That's Proverbs six sixteen through seventeen. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. That's Proverbs 12 and 22. Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be full of gravel. That's Proverbs 20 and 17. And the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God that is good and acceptable and perfect. That is also, as we go down uh, Romans 12, um, then I'm going to go a little further. It says we should be protecting the innocent. We should be reminding grandparents that they still matter. We should be letting them know that they are needed and not disposable. We should be living. We should be living a lot different from the world. We should be living completely different from the world. We should have hope and, and, to the like to the point where it's desirable to others our level of hope should be desirable to others we should be faithful when families have become divided and shut their doors out of fear you don't know how many and i'm gonna i'm gonna be a little vulnerable right now but you you don't know how many friends that i felt that i had before pandemic who have shut their doors and have uh basically you know been been kind of insular where they don't want to um, just allow anybody in out of fear. So that's something I know people are dealing with. Cause I know for me, I'm dealing with that as well. Um, as far as just that big shift in the trust, like uh, the trust in God, first of all, because God is bigger than this virus and bigger than anything that we can face. Um, but also the trust to be able to say, Hey, I know you need me and I need you. Um, let's get together and fellowship and just trust God and let him have whatever happens after that. Um, but back to the point, uh, we should be listening to Christian God honoring music, not secular vile music. Um, we should be upholding the scriptures instead of embracing delusional idea, uh, ideologies like the black lives matter movement or the pro mass or pro vaccine or pro whatever that's causing divisions in our society and in, and honestly in different friendships and relationships and things like that. So many others, um, are dedicated to dividing and oppressing the, those that are already free and Jesus population. That's how I put it. But those who are blood ball believers, there should not be a reason why we are causing bondage for those who are our brothers and sisters who are free. That doesn't make sense. Uh, then we become like advocates for Satan. We don't want to do that. Um, but if you have any practices and I'll say this because again, all my topics will have something to do with the Lord because he's my everything. All of my topics also will have, um, a point where some hard things have to be said. This is one of them. If you are practicing anything, anything, I don't care if it's something like veganism, like some people have allergies, they got to eat that way, but don't call it veganism. Just call it a dietary change. So if it's even that, anything that causes you to have to adopt it as your identity, like that's not Christianity because that's our identity. That's we're supposed to be Christ-like. That's who we should identify as. If anything is causing you to change your identity, it's not of God. So I don't care if it's consulting mediums. That's not of God. Uh, or consulting necromancers. That's in the Bible or dictionary. Look it up. Um, or if you're doing yoga, that opens your body up to demonic possession. So if anybody is listening to this, I'm not trying to call you out as far as you are a terrible person. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is consider this a warning. The Bible says that we are not to do things that open up ourselves to any other spirit except for the spirit of God. If you, like I said, are practicing anything that opens you up, repent today and be filled. Like literally all over again, just a new experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not need to open your body up to spiritual possession that is not the spirit of Christ. So I'll get back to the point. 
uh there we go uh if we have we have to make sure that we realize that if we've grown to love something but it's anti-god we need to let it go so if it's something that you find out like man i've been uh i've been practicing yoga and i didn't realize that i'm opening myself up because people call it christian yoga you cannot have christian yoga that you can't have christian yoga mu any much i'm sorry i'm getting tongued out again you cannot have christian yoga just like you can't have a bowl of hot ice just like you can't have a sanctified stripper just like you can't have a holy pole dancer like you know what i'm saying like you cannot make something christ or make something that cannot be redeemed it does not have a soul you cannot then say that it's a christian form of this no god wants no parts of that you can see it clearly in his word of, word of God. And like I said, it's not just to try to rant on folks. Because if I'm doing something that the Lord doesn't like, then I need to change. It's not a it's not a soapbox like where I'm pointing a finger and I don't get it pointed back at me. All of us have to measure up to the word of God. All of us have a checks and balance system that happens when we come on this side of Christ. Like when we become his, we all have to live up to the standards. We have to love what God loves and hate what he hates. So let me get back to it. Um... I'm going to go back and restate the fact that we have to realize that if we've grown to love something, but it's anti-God, then we need to let it go. Beware of anything that requires you to make it your identity. Do your research. Research, pray, lay down your idols, repent for the Lord is soon to come. Call, uh, you can call it a warning. You can call it whatever you would like. But I know that God is not he's not one to be mocked and he's not one to be played with if god says he hates it god hates it so you need to let it go if god says he loves it then we need to love what he loves and hate what he hates no matter what anybody else says no matter if they say or anyone says but i was born like this but i was whatever but i feel like i'm more comfortable as this i feel like i should have whatever because i heard something recently actually it brought up right now in my mind my husband shared something with with me uh or with our family yesterday about the dangers of believing that you are smarter than god and i'll put that he didn't make that title but i'll say it like that that someone was actually as a grown adult someone actually said that they felt like they were supposed to be born blind so with the help of a, a physician they actually did whatever they whatever procedure to cause this person to permanently be blind and and that to me was like lunacy i was like i cannot believe that someone that god gave sight to was willing to say i know better than god and i'm going to do this like it broke my heart like i don't understand what god established is just that he established it he's the creator of all things that create is created and he's perfect his ways are higher than your ways and mine. His ways, his thoughts, all that way beyond something that we could even fathom. Let's get out of our pride, whether it's a prideful lifestyle that is living alternatively to what God says, whatever pride in your life, in Jesus name, you need to cast down. You need to cast down every lofty opinion, every one of them. To make it submit under the authority of Christ. I'm paraphrasing that scripture. I think it's in Corinthians. But what I'm saying is we all have work to do on this side. We cannot. We cannot. And when I say work to do, I'm not saying you got to earn your salvation. None of that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is we have an obligation as blood-bought believers to do just that. Be blood-bought believers. We should not be parroting or we should not be uh mimicking what the word says i mean with the world excuse me we cannot be mimicking what the world says is acceptable because the world did not create itself we are the created beings trying to tell the creator what to do and we are in need of repentance y'all we are we are in repent we need to repent we need to turn away and we need to be healed from the nonsense because the world right now is causing like uh it makes me think of, and I know I have some far-fetched analogies sometimes, but if you guys are in my age bracket or a little bit older, if you're too young, you won't get this one. But if you used to eat at McDonald's when it actually tasted normal, um, 
they used to have a thing called uh, salad shakeups or shakeups or something like that. That they, they had all the ingredients. All you had to do was like pour in the dressing and shake it up, and it's supposed to make this amazing tasting salad. It used to. The food used to actually be food. But what I'm saying is that's how the world is trying to do. The world is trying to throw this on top of that and then shake it up and see. Look, it's a salad. No, but what you did was added three ingredients that don't even make salad salad but they want you to think it is like they added anchovies and some dirt and then they added some lotion on top of it shook it up like look a healthy salad is delusional so get back getting back to the point we have to make sure that we are not saying the same things that the world is saying because a lot of people out here has been uh, they've been side by side marching through the streets with their hands raised talking about black lives matter and nonsense like that but then realizing that they're a blood bought believer, but they're focused on their melanin. They're a blood bought believer, but the hands raised right next to them are, are they're fighting for lesbianism and fighting for all types of vile LGBT nonsense. You cannot be partnered with the world and repping Christ. You can't do it. You just cannot do it. So today, you hurt my mouth, you hurt my rant, not to sound angry, but I'm just passionate about if you are calling yourself a Christian, if you are calling yourself a blood-bought believer, then own it and live it. It does you a disservice if you are walking on this side, because it's not easy. It's not easy. Some stuff that you experience on this side knocks you to your knees and takes the breath out of your body for a moment because it's just hard but it's worth it because god is good and god is faithful so why go through the things that you go through on this side all to live halfway so i'm gonna leave you guys you ladies with that um this week i'm gonna leave you with this just to remember trust god as you cry and repeat reach out to somebody this week Love on somebody this week. Come out of fear this week. Some fellowship needs to happen. All right, ladies. Trust God bless God, you. Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat.